and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new interactive die Flippy Flappy. So let's go ahead and check out and see what it does. Flippy Flappy helps you create two types of cards and the first type of card is a gift card reveal. So as you pull that tab, you get this cool flip flap motion and you get to have this awesome gift card surprise. You can also do cute things with little critters coming from all different directions and we'll be showing you how to put this die together, how to use it in the two different ways and also how to make these three cards. So let's go ahead and start looking at all of the parts of Flippy Flappy. So first up, we have our mechanism creator piece. So this is the piece that's gonna create the part that's actually moving in this interactive die. That is our pull tab there. And then we have our gift card holder. And then we have the pieces that help you make the critter version. So we have a little acetate piece cutter and a cover up piece cutter. We have a little decorative pull tab piece that lets the recipient know what to do. There's a little extra arrow on the inside you can use too. And then this creates a little notch that makes it easier to be able to grab the pull tab for the flippy flappy. And that's what that looks like when it's cut out of a card. So let's go through the process of creating one of these awesome cards. The first step to creating Flippy Flappy is to trim down a piece of cardstock to three and three quarters by five. And that size might be familiar to you because it's a piece of cardstock that when you put it on a standard size card, you get a nice quarter inch border all the way around. It's also the same size as the largest of our small stitched rectangles, which is one of my most used dies. So it gives you a really nice border on your final finished card, and it's the perfect size to cover up that gift card too. So that's that size of rectangle. You can see it's the same size as we've trimmed down here three and three quarters by five. Next we're going to take out our flippy flappy die and grab that mechanism creator piece and you'll notice this piece has a couple special things on it. First it has a little arrow at that bottom and that arrow is always going to point down and then it's got this big open space there and that there is giving you the exact measurement of where the piece needs to go on your card so that you don't have to measure or create any pencil lines. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to line it up right in the center of our card. So you'll see I'm just using my grid mat as my guide. Once I have it in the center I'm going to hold it in place with some low tack tape and you'll notice that the bottom of that die is lined up with the bottom of my piece of cardstock. We're going to run that through the die cut machine and then remove the die and you'll see that it's created three cuts for us and then also a bunch of score lines that we're going to be folding in a second. Here you can see by lining up that die at the very bottom of our cardstock it's given us a perfect placement for that mechanism. Our next step is to fold those five score lines. So we're gonna fold those towards ourselves. So you'll see I'm just gonna work my way down folding all five of them and creasing them really well. You could even use a bone folder here to get a nice sharp crease. Now that we have all of these folded, we're gonna do a little labeling. Now the good thing is, is you can do this when you create your cards too because no one ever ends up seeing this piece of cardstock. It ends up being completely covered up at the end. So I'm gonna write front on the front and then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna write back. And that's gonna help keep us on track knowing how we're using the die. Then we're gonna fold those five score lines again from the back towards ourselves, creasing really well. And that's gonna give those folds just a really nice crease so that they're gonna work really well in the motion of the die. Next, we're gonna take that tab die and we're gonna run that through the die cut machine. And that's gonna give us this really cool tab with beautiful stitching and a slot in there that's gonna be part of this whole mechanism. And then here you'll see that there's the pretty stitching on the front and the not as pretty on the back. And we're gonna go ahead and label this one too because that's gonna help keep us on track in making sure we're creating our card correctly. So that says front, we're gonna flip it over to the other side and right back. Now we're gonna make sure that we're looking at the back of our card and the back of our tab, and then we're gonna feed that piece that we folded through the slot in the tab, just like that. Then we're gonna make sure we only have one of those folds sticking through. So we're only gonna have a piece sticking through up until that very first fold. And so it's gonna look just like this. Then we're gonna take some nice, strong double-sided tape. You definitely want strong tape for this. Tape runner's not gonna do it here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that strong tape and we're gonna attach it to that fold that's sticking out from the slot in the tab. So we're gonna add some nice, strong tape there. Then we can remove that liner paper and secure that onto the tab. And when I secure this, what I like to do is kind of 
push that tab up so that it's right up against that fold that we created, just like that. You kind of just butt them up against each other. Then I'm gonna make sure that my tab is nice and straight. Once it's straight, we can push down and secure the folded piece just like that. And we're starting to form our mechanism. One of the tricks to the flippy flappy is using double foam. So I have some foam tape here and what I'm gonna do is just double it up. You could also use foam squares and just stack them up on top of each other to create that double height of foam. So once I attach this foam here, just like that, now I've got double height. What I'm gonna do is take some scissors and cut it in half. And these pieces will be about a quarter of an inch. And that's about the size that you want. This is I think five eighths of an inch, so it's close. You know, It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but that's pretty good right there. And then we're gonna take those pieces and we're gonna line them up on the left and right of this card. That is the only place we're gonna put foam and that's really important to make sure the flippy flappy works. So we're gonna put some foam there on the left and then we're gonna put some foam on the right. And in those middle areas, there is going to be no foam. And for the mechanism to work, it needs that space away from the foam for it to be able to do its motion. And this is what the back of your flippy flappy is going to look like. Now we're gonna flip it over to the front. And I like to mess with it right here because this is where you're really gonna help reinforce those folds. You can see that mine kind of got a little buckled up. That's okay, just play with it back and forth. Press down until you see that nice motion happening. Next, we're gonna take out a standard size card that says five and a half by four and a quarter inches. And we talked about that at the beginning, that this is gonna give you that perfect quarter inch border on your card. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel up the liner paper on those two strips of foam, and then we're just gonna center this piece onto our card base. So you'll see here, I'm gonna make sure that my tab's nice and flat, and as I center it, you'll notice that that tab is gonna line up exactly with the bottom of my card. So just center it right on the card base and push down. Then I'm going to pull and push my tab and make sure it's working really well, and it is. So next we're gonna start off by pulling that tab and making sure it's all the way pulled out, kind of like the card sticking out its tongue. And we're gonna see one of those little folds are exposed. Well, we're gonna be putting some nice strong tape there again. So I've got my double-sided tape again, and we're gonna attach that right there to that fold. Now for this first version, we're gonna create the gift card version. So we're gonna take this little rounded rectangle die that's included in the flippy flappy and die cut that. And that is our gift card holder and it's the perfect size for that. So we've die cut that and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna peel up this liner paper and we're gonna attach that right on there. So I'm just gonna center it on my tab and then we can press down and that's all you have to do. Now the next step is, is pushing the tab in. And you're gonna notice the first time you do it, it's a little bit hard. That's okay, you have to teach this interactive die kind of what to do and how to fold. So you'll see, I'm gonna push it in and then pull and then kind of mess with it again. And once I do that a couple of times, it's gonna be working really, really well step is to add our gift card. And when you add the gift card on here, you'll see that this is gonna work even better because it gives it some nice heft. So I've got a little Starbucks gift card, you know, it's everyone's kind of holiday favorite gift card. And I'm just gonna add a couple of glue dots to the back. I've got the tiny glue dots, so I'm gonna use three of them. And we're gonna attach that right onto this gift card holder, just like that. And you'll see that you get a nice little border with that pretty stitching detail. Next, we're going to play with this and see how it's working. So you'll see I'm kind of guiding it and teaching it again. Our next step is to tell the recipient what to do, right? So there's a little die included in this set that gives you this great little arrow. And so I've gone ahead and die cut that and you can just add some tape runner and then attach that to the bottom. You could use the arrow on its own or even stamp the word pull, for example. And so now we've got our decorative arrow and our next step is to add our cover. So I just have a piece of plain cardstock here, but this would be something that you've decorated with a cute scene or a sentiment. And we're gonna add our tape runner. And you can put the tape runner all over this piece here, except for the mechanism. So you can even go underneath the mechanism, just all the way around, just not on the mechanism. And then we're gonna add our cover piece on top. And when you add the cover piece, your die mechanism is gonna work even better. So here you're gonna see, look at that flap action. How cute is this? It's such a fun way to present a gift card and make it just something special and exciting for somebody. I especially love this along the holidays. And you can see that this die could come out from any side. It can go portrait, landscape, top, or bottom, depending on your card design.
Next, we're gonna learn how to use the flippy flappy in a different way, and it's that cool critter version. And the best part is, is the very beginning is the same as we just learned with the gift card version. We have a piece of cardstock that's three and three quarters by five, and we're gonna take our mechanism creator piece, and we're gonna line that up with the arrow pointing down. The bottom of the die is gonna line up with the bottom of our piece of cardstock, and we're gonna center that in our cardstock hold it in place with some low tack tape and run it through the die cut machine. And the die is gonna create five folds for us and we're gonna fold those folds towards ourselves, all five of them creasing really well. Then we're gonna label the front of this front and we're gonna flip it over and label it back. And then we're gonna fold those folds again towards ourselves. And by folding them in both directions, it's gonna give them a really nice action as we pull the tab of our flippy flappy. Next up, we're gonna take out our tab piece and the die creates this really beautiful stitching. And so we can kind of easily tell the front and the back cause the back doesn't look quite as nice. So we're gonna do front and we're gonna flip it over and label it back. And now we're gonna make sure that we're looking at the back of our card and the back of our tab. Then we're gonna take that tab and we're going to feed the piece that we folded through the slot of the tab. And as we feed it through the slot, we're gonna take care to make sure that we only have one of those little folded pieces peeking through. Next, we're gonna take some nice, strong double-sided tape and we're gonna add that to that piece that's peeking out through the slot of the tab. Then we can peel up that liner paper and we're gonna be attaching that to the tab. And when I attach that to the tab, I always like to make sure that my tab is nice and straight and that it's right up against that fold that we created. And so you see I'm just making sure it's straight and now I can push down and secure it. Next up, we need to get our foam. And so we're gonna double up our foam tape here. You could use foam squares as well and just double those up too, but we need that nice height. And then we're gonna take our foam tape and we're going to cut it in half so that they're about quarter of an inches. It doesn't have to be exact. And when we put our foam tape, we're gonna go on the left side and the right side all the way up against that edge. And we're gonna make sure there's no foam around that tab piece because we want our mechanism to be able to move freely and work really well. Next, we're gonna flip that die over and we're gonna pull the tab and we're gonna make sure we train those folds and kind of teach them what to do. So we can pull and kind of press down and now you'll see that mine is moving nice and freely. Just like before, we're gonna peel up the liner paper on our foam tape and then we're gonna take this whole piece and we're gonna center that right onto our card so that we have a nice quarter inch border all of the way around. Then we're just gonna press down really well and we're gonna pull that tab and have that tongue sticking out all the way so that we can see one of those folds peeking through. And now is where things are gonna change just a little bit. So we're gonna use that longer rectangle. That is your acetate cutting piece. And then your shorter rectangle is your cover up piece. Next, we'll take some nice strong double-sided tape and we're gonna put that right on that fold that we exposed by pulling the tab all the way out. Now here I wanna show you that this acetate piece can go anywhere along that tape. So depending on what card design you're looking for, you can place that anywhere along the tape. We're just gonna go right in the center for this demonstration. Now you'll notice that doesn't look very pretty, right? That's why we have the cover up piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another piece of double-sided tape right on top of where that acetate piece is. And then we're gonna cover it up with the cover up piece. And that's just cut to the perfect size rectangle to cover up that little fold. That's gonna make it look nice and clean and really, really pretty. Now, just like with the gift card, we kind of want to push and pull the tab, make sure it's working. And now we can attach our panel on the front. And this will be the panel that you'll decorate with your cute critters, with your sentiment, etc. We're going to add that tape all of the way around, but not on the mechanism. And then we're going to add our piece right on top to give it a nice finished look. Then we can pull that tab out and we're going to have the acetate piece popping up. Now I took a little critter here. Here's a little cat from Perfectly Wicked. I'm gonna add some tape along the back of the critter and then I'm gonna place it on the acetate. You'll see I have a little acetate sticking up. That's okay. So you can place it anywhere along the acetate and if you have a little extra acetate, you can just take your scissors and trim it off. So it'll just kind of see how you want it to land on your card design. And as we make cards throughout this video, you'll see how that really works within a design. And now you can see as you push and pull the tab, you get this awesome surprise with this little cat popping up out of nowhere. It's adorable and so much fun. And once again, just like the gift card, you can have your critter or whatever it might be pop up from the top, the bottom, the sides. And we're gonna show you a portrait version and a landscape version in this video.
Now the last little part of the Flippy Flappy is this optional die which you can use or not and it's our little notch creating piece. And what you do is when you get to the point of bringing out your standard size card base, this is when you're going to use the notch piece. So you'll take this notch piece and you're going to line it up with the bottom of your standard sized card base. And so you'll see that those metal tabs that are sticking out are going to be um, underneath the card kind of butting up against the card and then you're going to hold it in place with some low tack tape. You're going to cut it right from the center there at the bottom and we'll run it through the die cut machine making sure to only cut from the front of the card base and this is a little notch for your thumb so you don't have to do this it's just a nice little extra finishing touch so at this point you would peel up the liner paper from your mechanism and you would center that onto your card base and then you'll have that awesome little notch where you can fit your thumb underneath and then you can pull more easily on the tab so you can do this notch or not whatever works for you now it's time to make a card with this die and we're starting off with a piece of mermaid cardstock that's three and three quarter inches by five inches and we're going to do some ink blending. So here we're using some peacock feathers ink and some blueprint sketch ink and this is my favorite way to do a winter Christmassy sky and Audrey taught me these colors and it's just beautiful. And by starting off with the mermaid cardstock it means you don't have to do so much ink blending. It really helps to be able to just add a little bit of the ink blending and it's going to look really really awesome. So now that we've blended our peacock feathers and blueprint sketch into our mermaid cardstock, we're going to do some stenciling with a brand new stencil and it's called the Snowflake Background Stencil. And so we're going to line up this stencil with this piece and then we're just going to hold it in place with these magnets so that we can do some stenciling with some white pigment ink, which we call Yeti ink. And we're going to take a blender brush and pick up some of that white ink and we're going to stencil these snowflakes on top of that ink blended background that we just created. Snowflake background stencil is a two-step stencil. So this is the first step and then after we're done with these snowflakes we'll add on the second stencil to help fill in the background. Now we're doing just one color here but because it's a two-step stencil you could do two colors so you can have a lot of fun with this stencil with a lot of cute backgrounds but in this case we're going to stick with our white so that it goes over top of our ink blended background. And so now we'll repeat the same thing. We're going to add that white Yeti pigment ink over top of the stencil. And this piece that we're stenciling and inking right now this is going to be the decorative piece that goes on top of the flippy flappy mechanism and you'll see how that's going to work in just a little bit but right now we're going to do my absolute favorite part and that's pulling up the stencil and revealing the background and look how pretty that is oh I love it so very much so we're going to put this aside to dry and we're going to work on our flippy flappy mechanism so we're starting as always with the three and three quarter inch by five inch panel and we're going to take out our flippy flappy dies and we're going to take out that mechanism creator die we're going to line it up with the very bottom of our cardstock with that arrow pointing down and right in the center and I like to use my grid mat to help me make sure that that arrow is pointing right to the center of that card piece. Now we're going to fold those five score lines that the die created for us and we're going to fold those towards ourselves and then just so I keep everything in order I always label my pieces so I'm going to label this front and back and you can do this too because this will not show in your card design and you'll see that as we create the card. So now we're on the back of our piece and we're going to do that same folding again. So we're going to fold towards ourselves, and this is going to help your flippy flappy mechanism work really smoothly and really have a nice action to it. Next we're going to take out our tab die and we're going to cut some 110 pound white cardstock. For this tab you want to use 100 pound or 110 pound cardstock to make it nice and sturdy. So here we're going to label that front and back again and that's just going to keep everything nice and orderly. So we're going to make sure both are on the back and then we're going to feed that piece that we folded through the slot in the tab. Then we'll add some nice strong double sided tape to that little folded piece and there's only one of those folded pieces peeking out of the tab. And then we're going to peel up that liner paper and we're going to make sure our tab is nice and straight and kind of butt it up against that first fold and then we can fold it down and attach it to the tab flip it over and start to pull that piece to make sure it's working. You'll see there you kind of have to pull it and press down and fold it and really teach it what it needs to do. Next I'm going to take some doubled up foam and we're going to cut this in half and the pieces will be about a quarter of an inch and we're going to add those foam pieces to the left side and the right side and that's the only place we're going to put foam so that our mechanism can move freely. 
Next, we're going to take a standard size card out. So this is five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're going to add some decorative pattern paper to this to match our card design. So this is some of the Let It Shine paper. And the back has this really fun red and white stripe that I absolutely love for Christmas cards. So we're going to layer that onto the standard size card, five and a half by four and a quarter. So we're going to have that beautiful decoration there. And now we can take our mechanism just like we did at the beginning of the video. We're going to peel up that liner paper on both of them. And then we're going to center this piece onto the card so that there's a nice quarter inch border all of the way around the mechanism. Next, we're gonna pull that tab and make sure that it's working really well. And then we're gonna pull it all of the way out to expose that one little folded piece there. And that's where we're gonna be adding our nice, strong double-sided tape. And for this card, we're gonna be making it a gift card holder, which is my favorite way to use the flippy flappy. So we're gonna peel up that liner paper, exposing the adhesive, and then we're gonna die cut the gift card holder from the flippy flappy die from that same Let It Shine pattern paper so that everything mixes and matches really nicely. We're gonna center that on our card and then we're gonna attach that right onto the adhesive just like this. So we'll center it and then press down. Next, we're gonna to start to pull and push the tab, just training this die what to do. So the first couple times that you do it, you'll notice it doesn't work quite as smoothly. It's because we're just training those folds, reminding them what they need to do, and then we're gonna have a really great action. Next, we're gonna take a gift card and add some glue dots to the back. And I like using glue tots because it makes it really easy to remove the gift card for the recipient. So we're gonna attach those glue tots and then we're gonna center it right onto that gift card holder. And you'll see it has that really cute little frame to it. And it looks so cute with the green and the red together. And then you can see that our mechanism is working and it's so cool and so fun. So now we need to do some more decorating because that awesome background is finally dry. And so we're gonna take the new Giant Merry Christmas die and we're gonna cut that from some red shimmer cardstock and also some white cardstock too. And we're gonna layer those together to create a cool little shadow. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue to the back of my white one with my glue tube and then layer it onto the red one, shifting it to the right just a little bit so that you get this cool red shadow on the card. And that's gonna bring in the red and white stripes from the card base. Now we need a little snow for our ground, so we're gonna take some pixie dust cardstock and die cut it with a stitched hillside border. And then we'll add some tape runner to the back of that and attach that and start to create our scene. So we're gonna take out some of my favorite of the new sets, and these are some of the new holiday sets. And first up, we're gonna take out Furry and Bright, which are the cutest little dogs. And we're gonna stamp, color, and die cut some of the images from the set. And we're also going to take out our new Joy to All stamp set, and we're gonna die cut and stamp one of the images from that set too. And so you'll see there, I have those all prepped and ready to go. So there's that cute little dog bowl. We have a dog bone, the dog, and also some cute little Christmas lights. And we're gonna to start to decorate this whole scene. We're gonna add that adorable dog on with foam squares since he's kind of the star of the show here. And then we're gonna add some tape runner to the back of our Merry Christmas and layer that up top. And that's gonna help us know how to place the rest of the items in our scene. So we're gonna add that little dog bowl and the dog bone just with some tape runner once again. So our dog is the star of the show. He's gonna be the most popped up. And then I added some little foam squares to the back of the string of lights and the dog is gonna hold the string of lights as if he's running through the snow with them, which I think is such a cute little scene. Now we can add this whole panel to our flippy flappy mechanism that we created. And that's one of the things that I love about this interactive card is you can create the whole mechanism and then create your whole panel just like you would when you make a standard card that isn't interactive and then just layer it on top. So you could take designs that you've already created and use them in a flippy flappy card and vice versa, right? So this would be a really cute card without the flippy flappy too. So now we've layered our decorative piece on top of the flippy flappy and we have to let the recipient know what to do. And so in the die set, there is this little arrow piece and there's the interior arrow and then the bigger one. And in this case, I just wanted to use that tiny little arrow because I really liked the bright white tab. And so I think that looks really, really cute that way. And then right now is when I realized something. I actually wanted my gift card to come from the top and you'll see why in a second. So thank goodness I used some dot runner. I was able to peel it off, flip the card over, and then just put my panel on this way. And that's how easy it is to have the flippy flappy come from the top or the bottom. So I'll layer that back on. And now as I pull the tab, you'll see why, because when you pull it, it doesn't cover up the cute little scene with the dog. So I like it coming from the top, but you could also have it coming from the bottom. And this is so cool. I have so much fun making these. I can't wait to see what you guys are gonna create with this. It's such a cool way to present a gift card. And next up, we're gonna show you how to use it with a critter and in portrait style.
First up, we're going to create a background, and I have die cut the largest of the small stitched rectangles, which is our magic size of three and three quarter by five inches. And I cut this from some Bristol Smooth cardstock, which makes it really easy to ink blend on. And I have a ton of distressings here from yellow to orange to red to create a really fun fall background. And after creating that Christmassy background, I wanted to do a similar idea, but for fall. So we're doing that right here. And you'll see that as I go from one color then I go back to the previous one to help blend like the red to orange together or the orange to yellow together and any yellow to orange inks would work great for this. Now we also have a fall leaves background stencil that's brand new for this release and we're going to do the same exact technique with the Yeti ink over this ink blended background but in this case we're going to have a fall look instead of a holiday look. So we're going to add that white pigment on with some blender brushes over that inked background and so I'm just going to go over this whole stencil and this stencil is also a two-step stencil so that you could do two colors or in this case we're just doing one with our white and you'll see that I kind of peeked to see how it was looking and this is going to be a really subtle look because our background isn't quite as bold as those dark blues we had for the Merry Christmas card and I really like that that it's going to be really subtle and this is just I had a lot of fun making this background so now we've lined up the second part of the stencil and we're going to ink that white pigment ink all over and then lift up the stencil and look how pretty that is it's just subtle but it's just so gorgeous oh I had fun making this now of course I wanted to add some splatters to this so what I'm going to do is take a spray bottle and just spray a little bit of water and then with a paper towel I'm going to pick up the excess water and that's going to give us this kind of cool magical looking background and so I'll spray a little bit more and then keep picking up the excess and we'll just spray until it kind of looks perfect there's no right or wrong way to do this I just think it gives it like a magical kind of feel to it now it's time to create our portrait style flippy flappy card using a critter so here you'll see that I've got the same piece three and three quarter inches by five inches but I have it in a portrait orientation I'm going to take my die and it's going to line up with the center again right flush against the edge of the card we're going to hold it in place with some low tack tape and then we're going to run it through the die cut machine and you'll see when we do that it looks exactly the same as the landscape version so it's the exact same way we're just going to have it in a portrait orientation by the end of this card design but I always like to make these in a landscape orientation because I just find it easier to fold that way and this time you'll see that I took out my bone folder to do the folds you can either just do it with your fingers or you can do it with a bone folder if you prefer to fold things this way and so we're going to fold all five of our folds towards ourselves from the front and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to fold them from the back and we're going to take out our tab die just like before and we're going to die cut that once again from some strong 100 pound cardstock and we're going to use some craft cardstock as well and then you'll see we've got our tab there and I'm going to label it again front and back just to keep everything nice and orderly. Now we can take the piece that we fold it and feed it through the slot on the tab and we're going to make sure just one of those folds is peeking out and then we're going to add some nice strong double sided tape to that fold. We'll make sure that our tab is nice and straight and then we can fold that fold over and attach it to our tab. Next, I'm going to take some doubled up foam that's about a quarter of an inch thick and we're going to put that on the left and right sides and that's the only place that we're going to put our foam. The next step is to create a standard size card base. So we're going to be creating a tall top fold card base. It's going to be five and a half by four and a quarter inches. And at first I had it as this plain craft, but then it looked a little bit boring with that awesome inked background that we created earlier. So I'm just going to take some antique linen distress ink, any kind of light brown, and just ink the outside edges of this card base just to help kind of bring it in to the whole design. And now we have our card base here and we've got it in portrait orientation. And then we have our flippy flappy mechanism and I realized for everything to match that I needed to ink the tab as well and it would have been best to ink the tab before I put the whole thing together but it was actually very easy to just pull the tab completely out I put a piece of scratch paper behind it and we're just going to ink that up so it matches nicely then we can flip it over and peel up that liner paper and we're going to attach this in a portrait orientation so you'll see we have the top fold there and we're going to center this so there's a nice quarter inch border all of the way around and now we have a tab pole that's on the left hand side that's going to give us a really cool portrait look. I'm going to mess around with this flippy flappy pulling it in and out making sure that the mechanism is working really well 
and then we're going to start to decorate our seam. Now the reason I didn't keep going on with my flippy flappy construction is, is when you're doing the critter version, you really want to have your seam created already, and you're going to see why. So what we've done is we've taken the You Autumn No stamp set and the Scripty Autumn Sentiments stamped and colored and die cut a bunch of images, and then here we have some Watercolor Wishes rainbow paper, and I really like the green in this paper. We die cut it with that same stitch rectangle. It's the largest of the small stitch rectangles. And then we're gonna die cut that with a simple stitched hillside border and add some tape runner to the back and add that to our scene to help ground our cute little mice. Now it's time to start adding our cute little stamped images to the scene. And we're gonna create a pile of leaves at the bottom. The one in the background is gonna be with tape runner and then two that are gonna be in the front are gonna be with foam squares. That's gonna create a really cool dimension. And then we can tuck that little mouse inside. Now, the rest of this card we're going to be doing with Tape Runner, and that's for two reasons. One, we're going to have that mouse popping in from the side, right? So, because we already kind of created that flippy flappy mechanism in the portrait orientation. And so I don't want there to be foam squares in the way of the movement of that mechanism. So that's number one. And then two, I like using this dot runner because I'm going to be able to move things around if I don't quite like the placement at the end. And you're, you're going to see how I end up doing that. I kind of end up changing the design just a little bit. So we've added one little mouse to that big leaf, so he's riding the leaf. We've added the little guy holding a leaf and the other one kind of landing in a little cluster of leaves. And we're going to start adding these to our design. And I'm kind of playing around with how I think the design's going to look. And the guy that's going to be flapping in is that little mouse on the fall leaf. So here is my flippy flappy mechanism, and now we're gonna work on doing it in that critter style. So we've cut our acetate piece and our cover up piece. We're gonna add some of that nice, strong double-sided tape to that exposed piece. We've pulled the tab completely out, and now is where we need to layer on our seam to decide where our mouse is gonna go. So at the beginning, we talked about how that acetate can kind of go anywhere along that adhesive. I'm just eyeballing about where it needs to go, and it's not gonna be quite center. It's gonna be a little bit lower. This is very forgiving where you put your acetate, so don't worry about having the exact right placement. I'm sure anywhere you place it will be great. Now the next thing we need to do is add a little bit more of that double-sided tape and add our cover-up piece to make it look nice and finished. So we'll add that tape there, we'll peel up the liner paper, and then add the cover-up piece that I've cut from that same color of cardstock so that everything blends in really nicely. Next step is to play around with this mechanism and make sure that those folds are working really well. You'll notice when you have the acetate without anything attached to it, it's a little bit flimsy, but of course as we start to attach everything, it's going to work really great. Now the next step is to add that scene on there. So we're gonna put our tape runner all the way around but not on the mechanism, and then we can layer our whole panel on just like this. Once that's layered on there, we're gonna pull the tab so that our acetate piece is going to be sticking out. And then we're gonna add some tape runner to this leaf. And this is where you'll see it's very forgiving. So you can kind of move it along the acetate to see where the best placement's gonna be. The only rule of thumb here is that you can't put it beyond the edge of the acetate. The reason for this is if you do that, then it's gonna stick out too much when you fold the whole thing back in. So the acetate is telling you how far it can go out. But the cool thing is, is you can go in some too. And so here you can see that I've put him in a little bit and I've just trimmed off any of the excess of that acetate. Now here is where I'm doing the final evaluation of my scene. I'm not totally sure how it looks. I don't really love that that mouse is kind of covering up the thanks there. So because I put everything on with the dot runner, I can kind of peel things up and move things around. So I'm going to move that thanks, and I think that's looking a lot cuter there. But then when I put the mouse in, I still want the card to look really nice without him there. So I'm just going to add one more leaf in there. Why not? More fall leaves, the better, right? So we're going to add that red fall leaf there, and you'll see that he covers up the leaf when he pops out, but you can see the whole word thanks. Now here we're going to do a little decorating of our tab. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to die cut the decorative arrow piece out of some wood grain cardstock. And I like that it's just a little bit darker than the craft. Uh, you can still see it, but it's still subtle, which I really like. And then now we're going to do some stamping on this tab, which is a little bit nerve wracking. And again, I probably should have done it before, but I was kind of figuring out the design as I went. So I'm going to use this magnet thing that's holding my flippy flappy die. I'm going to use it as a weight to hold down the tab 
slab and then I'm going to stamp the walnut and I was like holding my breath, but everything was okay. It stamped okay, which is really great. And I love decorating this little tab. You could put a heart or another little mouse, or in this case, we have got the floating by to say thanks. So it kind of helps finish the whole sentiment, which is really cute. And then we'll add one more leaf because that's just fun. And now our card is done and look how cute this is. I love that we've went from creating a gift card holder to having this cute little mouse pop in and out and that he's coming from the side is really cool too. So you can really have this die work for lots of different card designs. Now for our third card, we're gonna do a stepped up version of one of these critter pop outs. So you'll see we're gonna shift things around. It's gonna be really cool. And first up, we're gonna start off with a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. And we've got some really rainbow paper here and we're gonna layer this paper on. Then we're gonna take that same largest of the small stitch rectangles, it's the one that's three and three quarters by five inches, and we're gonna die cut some more really rainbow paper. And I love this rainbow school lined paper. And we're also going to die cut some wood grain paper too that's gonna to become our ground. And today I'm recreating a brilliant card by Grace. It's absolutely stunning, so thank you so much, Grace. And there you can see that wood grain piece, and we're going to trim that down to be our floor. And then to create a little baseboard, Grace got really creative and she found a die that's a part of our picket fence die and she die cut some white cardstock with that to create a baseboard. The other thing you could do is also just trim a little quarter inch piece of the wood grain white cardstock and it would be a really cute baseboard too. We're gonna add that right above our floor and then we can just use our scissors to trim off any of the excess. And what's so brilliant about Grace's design is that she took our Perfectly Wicked stamp set, which is a Halloween stamp set, but she was able to turn it into something that isn't Halloween at all. It's just a cute punny card that kind of has a school feel to it. So we're gonna take the cats, the books, the shelves, and we're gonna color them in in bright, happy rainbow colors instead of Halloween-y colors. We're also gonna take our Oliver Stitched ABCs and we're gonna die cut those out of some mermaid cardstock. I'm gonna start off by attaching my B here right in the center of the card, and that's gonna help me build my whole scene around that. So the ABC are gonna line up right to the top of that baseboard. We're going to tack down the A and the B, but not the C yet, because the C is gonna be the part that moves in our design. I'm gonna add the shelf and the books and the cat on with some foam tape, and then we're gonna work on our sentiment. So here we have some peacock cardstock we've cut with a simple wavy banner, and we're gonna be doing some heat embossing. And I love this sentiment so much because it's from a Halloween set, and it says, you're so special to me, but it also works really well for a school-themed card like we're creating here. So we're gonna take that sentiment and we're gonna curve it on our block to match the curve of this simple wavy banner. And then I went ahead and added an anti-static power tool to this. We're going to stamp in some clear embossing ink which is nice and sticky and then we can sprinkle on embossing powder and it's going to stick just to that ink because our anti-static tool is helping us out here and as we sprinkle that on you'll see the sentiment is forming and we can heat it up with our heat tool to have a nice bright white shiny sentiment on that beautiful peacock cardstock and we're going to add that with some tape runner to our ground. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different with our flippy floppy mechanism. So we're gonna take out a piece of cardstock that's three and three quarters by five inches, and we're gonna take out our mechanism creator piece, just like before. But now we're gonna take a look at this design, and you see that where that C is? That's the part that we want to pop out. So our mechanism is not gonna be in the center, and that's okay, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks with that. So I'm gonna kinda of eyeball it and line it up with that C, and once we've found that perfect placement, the things that are always true is that the arrow is pointing down and the die is always flush with the bottom of your card. We've just shifted it over just a little bit. So there is my perfect placement. I'm going to hold it in place with some low tack tape and then we'll run it through the die cut machine and we're going to have our flippy flappy mechanism just like before. It's just shifted a little bit over to the right. I'm gonna label this piece front and back because I always do. And then we're gonna start doing our folding. So we're gonna fold this in the exact same way. We're gonna fold all five folds towards ourselves and I'm just gonna crease those down really well. Then we'll flip it over and repeat the same thing. We're gonna fold those towards ourselves, all five of them, creasing them really well. Then we're gonna take the tab part of the flippy flappy die and we're gonna die cut some nice strong 110 pound white cardstock. And we're gonna label this front and back as well. We'll make sure we're looking at the back of the tab and the back of our card, and then we're gonna feed in that part that we folded through the slot in the tab. And we're gonna feed that through right up until that first fold. 
We'll add some nice strong double-sided tape to that folded piece and then we can peel up the liner paper and secure it to the tab and we'll make sure that that tab is nice and straight before we fold and secure that piece down. Then we'll flip it over and we're gonna pull that tab just like we've done in the other previous cards and make sure that it's working. So we're gonna really get those folds folding nicely, kind of moving back and forth and make sure it's working well. Now next up is where things are gonna change just a little bit since we shifted this whole piece over. So we're gonna take the foam and we're gonna double it up just like before. But now we're going to have to cut a much skinnier piece of foam since that piece is shifted a little bit over. So you'll see here, I'm gonna cut more like an eighth of an inch size piece of foam and then what's left over, I'm actually gonna trim that to be the traditional about quarter of an inch piece that we've been using. And that quarter of an inch piece is gonna go on that right hand side there where there's more space. So our bigger one is gonna go over there and then our nice and skinny one is gonna go on the left where there's less space between the tab and the outside edge of the card. And that's gonna give, once again, this mechanism enough space to move freely. If the foam gets too close, it won't move well. So if you make one of these, shift it over and it doesn't move well, go back and just trim down your foam and try again and it's gonna work perfectly. So here we've got that card base we added the pattern paper to and just like before, we're gonna peel up our liner paper and we're gonna take this whole piece and center it onto our standard size card base so that there's a nice quarter inch border all of the way around. And we're gonna pull and push that tab and make sure that it's moving freely. And then we're gonna bring back that cute scene we created where we turned those Halloween cats into kind of like a school slash reading vibe. I love to read so much, so I love the idea of creating a card with this fun kind of reading vibe to it or school vibe to it, it's just adorable. So it'd be really cute for a teacher or a kid's first day of school or for someone like me that just loves to read. Okay, so here we've got our C and we've got a cat. And we're gonna take out our dies and we're gonna cut an acetate piece and we're gonna cut a cover up piece because this is going to be a critter style flippy flappy. We're going to take that tab and we're gonna pull it all of the way out, making sure we expose that last little folded piece there. And then we're gonna take our seam and layer that on top. And I'm also going to take the C that is gonna be the part that's moving and I'm gonna layer that into the scene to kind of help me see what's going on there. So now that we've got that layered there, we can add our nice strong double-sided tape to that exposed piece there on the tab. And so we're gonna add that there and then we're gonna peel up that liner paper. Now we're gonna take that acetate piece and we're gonna line it up with the C that we've just temporarily placed there. And that way we'll know exactly where it needs to adhere down onto the tab. And it's actually gonna be just about in the center, which is pretty cool. Then we're gonna take our double-sided tape and we're gonna layer that over top and we're gonna add our cover-up piece so that it looks nice and finished. Next, we're gonna take our C and we're gonna add some tape runner on the back to it so that we can attach it to the acetate. And what I'm gonna do is just push the acetate piece down and line up the C with the rest of my letters, with the rest of my scene and press down. So similar to the leaves, right? We put it right into our scene. We're gonna see how it looks on the acetate piece and then we're just gonna trim off any of that extra that there might be. So next, we're actually gonna cut one more acetate piece. And so there's a couple of things here. One, flippy floppies work better when they're sturdier. So like they work great with a gift card or a larger critter and that C doesn't have a lot of heft to it. And then two, I thought it would be really adorable for that cat to also be flipping up. So it'd be this nice little surprise. So what we're gonna do is we've added some tape to the back of the C and we're gonna add another acetate piece that's perpendicular to the one that comes up. So you'll see now we've kind of got this like L shape going on there. So we've attached that on there. And then we're going to start working with the rest of the scene. So we wanna attach our cat now to the acetate piece that's sticking out. So we're gonna add some tape runner to the back of the cat and we're gonna layer him so that it looks like he's kind of holding the C similar to the one that's holding the A. So I'm just gonna layer him right on like that. Then what we can do is just trim off any of that excess. And you'll see that he's far enough in that he's not gonna get in the way of that foam tape that we added on there. Then we're gonna add some tape runner all the way to the front of the card here, but not over top of that mechanism. And then we can add our scene on top. So by adding that perpendicular piece, it kind of steps the card up, adds this cool new thing to it, and it makes the flippy flappy even sturdier so that the action's gonna work even better. 
So the last little step is to add a little book that this cat is going to be standing on. I really like the book there because when you see it before you pull the tab, you kind of wonder like, hmm, I wonder what's going to go on the book. So I kind of like that feeling. Now here I'm going to take our hearts and stars skinny tag die out. I love this die because it's got all these hearts in different sizes and they're the perfect little confetti. So I've cut that out of some red shimmer cardstock and we're going to sprinkle those around. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to use a heart as the arrow on this tab, which I think is going to look really cute and kind of tie in the whole design. So, I mean, look how adorable that is. Oh my goodness. So now you look at the card, you wonder, hmm, there's this big blank space. Oh my gosh, that's what happens. So it's A, B, and then C, which is a really cute surprise. So this was so much fun. I love that you can take the flippy flappy, use it as a gift card, or use it in a stepped up way like this with this cool perpendicular action with the acetate. And so I'm really excited to see the cool things that you guys are gonna create with this die. Now I wanted to show you all three versions all together here. So our first one was the gift card version, which is awesome and my absolute favorite. I just love it. I think it's such a cool way to present a gift in the holidays. Then here we have our critter version that's in portrait, which is really cool too. And last but not least, we have our stepped up version shifted over to the side and with our cool perpendicular acetate. So much fun and so cool. This die is an absolute blast to play with. And I'm so excited to be showing you some gorgeous cards by the design team. And this card designed by Audrey is adorable. I love the beautiful Merry Christmas. And as you pull, you have your awesome surprise of the gift card. Next up, we have a gorgeous card by Elena and hers is a critter surprise that you can see inspired me to make mine today. So as you pull that tab, you get the fun surprise of the little mouse kind of jumping into the leaves with his buddy down below. Shari's design is absolutely brilliant. So we've got that fun little cauldron there. And as you pull the tab, another cauldron pops up that has these cool bubbles and this big poof in it. So it becomes a really cool scene because you've kind of overlapped the two cauldrons together. And I just love it. And yes, there will be a video for that card. This card by Grace is just stunning. And so she has a critter pull tab that's coming in the landscape style. So we have that beautiful thank you. It works great on its own, but when you pull that tab, you get this cute surprise of our brand new little cheery deer there. It's just an adorable and sweet card. This card by Megan is so much fun. I love the spooky Halloween scene. There's a lot of little sneaks at some new products in this. And as you pull the tab, it comes from the top. So the critters can come from the top too. And you've got that adorable little ghost there. And then Elise blew me away with her design. So what she did was is she created a gift card style flippy flappy, but as you pull it, it actually has her whole sentiment. So you could put a gift card or you could put your sentiment or some images on that panel too. Here, this card by Kara is so pretty and has some awesome fall vibes. And as you pull it, she has a gift card and I love that she coordinated the colors to match her gift card. So cute and so sweet. I just love Letitia's adorable Halloween design and she got super, super creative too because as you pull the tab, she actually put money onto this. So it can work as a gift card holder or a money holder too, which is really, really cool. And then here we have a fun little Christmas card with a scene from our brand new Joy to All stamp set. And as you pull that tab, you're gonna have a fun gift card surprise, such a fun way to present a holiday gift. And oh my goodness, I just love this flippy flappy die and we are so excited to see what you you guys create with it. So thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!